Good evening, everybody, and um, welcome to Charing Cross Library. That's where we are now. My name is Aitor. I'm the manager of Charing Cross Library. And welcome to our third event in the series Mind Your Head. For those of you who have been um, attending these meetings before, you know that we are trying to create a series of small events, short events, in which different people, different kinds of people, telling us about the different hobbies and activities that they usually enjoy and how they have been adapting them to practice them during this past year of lockdowns and, and social isolation. And um, the event today is the third in the series and it's called Piano Accompaniments and it's all about learning to play the piano. And the person who's going to be with us in a minute is called Edita Donchakova, who's been very kindly um, doing this for us. I want to explain to you that this event has two different parts. In the first part, uh, you're going to see the event who has been, which has been recorded. So it's a recorded um, video of the event. But after that, uh, we are going to have Edita here with us live to answer your questions. So if you have any questions for her, please write them in the queue and we are going to read them uh, to her um, later on. Also, um, remember that there is always um, an email uh, which is going to be sent to you all after sometime after the event. And in this event, would be um, we will we are going to ask you to give us some feedback. That's very very important to us to know what you think about these events and how we can make them better. So, uh, without any further ado, um, I hope that you are going to enjoy this event. Again, uh, my name is Aitor. I'm sorry if you cannot see my face, but you know, uh, because of these COVID restrictions, we have to keep our distance. So um, I'm here with uh, Edita, uh, and she's going to talk um, with us about um, her, her experiences playing the piano uh, as a hobby before and after the COVID restrictions. Um, I hope that you are going to enjoy this session. So um, without much introduction, I'm going to uh, let Edita talk a bit about herself. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and I hope you are all well. Um, I, I'm really, really privileged to be invited to this talk. I hope you're going to find it inspiring. So as you know, I'm a dance teacher by profession. I also examine at uh, various schools. And uh, as you know, with the COVID restrictions, we were unable to really um, do much work. My last competition was in March last year, and then I just had to hang up my shoes <laughs> and perhaps replace it for something else like piano playing. Um, I have been learning to play piano for the last four or five years. I was quite fortunate with very good teachers. Uh, uh, it was really purely just a hobby. But because now we have so much time on our hands and a lot of frustration uh, with not being able to do um, something like our job, like dancing, I um, 
used up the time simply to uh, perhaps improve and advance um, at my piano playing, which has been quite rewarding. Um, okay, I've got some some questions of of my own for for Aita. For example, um, I know that dancing is is your job, and and piano started a bit a bit as a hobby. But why did you decide to to take on piano and not any other thing? Yes, um, well, uh, with piano is, you know, if you if you compare it to dancing, dancing is very social, um, and piano is a little solitary. Um, so. Now with the restrictions, obviously you're stuck in the house and you can't um, really be adventurous with anything else. And because I, it already has been my hobby, so um, it's been kind of easier to carry on with um, piano. Um, it's something I've been drawn to all my life, but I never got opportunity. I focused on dancing and learning to dance and learning to teach. Um, and then there was never enough time for piano playing. And now, fortunately, um, I have lots of time to dedicate myself to it. Um, was it difficult to swap the dance shoes for, for the piano or, or it was a natural transition? Well, from a social point of view, um, it is quite hard because suddenly you stop social interaction and uh, you're confined to a chair. Um, and I don't really like sitting still for too long. <laughs> So um, I'm hoping that soon we're going to go back to the studio. Mm, all right. Um, um, well, uh, we all know what has been um, during all these COVID restrictions, being stuck at home all the time, not being able to meet people in, in a social way and um, spending hours and hours on, on, on our own trying to find ways of, of, of coping with all this and different people have coped with different ways and this series is about that um, and you seem to have used your learning the piano to do that. Why, why do you think learning the piano has been helpful for you during this time apart from becoming better and better at playing the piano? Yes, well um, I find piano quite stimulating intellectually and uh, it's uh, quite challenging because you have to really um, spend time learning side reading which is quite hard work, um, but um, it feels so rewarding to be connected with the sound. Um, when you play piano, it transcends to a different dimension. It's, it's something similar to dancing, um, but uh, because I like music, all sorts of music uh, anyway, um, I, I have been quite content um, with the sound which you get uh, when communicating with the instrument. Um, well, all right. What do what do you? Is there anything that you find satisfying about playing the piano that you didn't get from from the interaction of dancing with people? Yes, um, I think you get to explore yourself a little bit more in inner. You find more in. You get to find inner peace. I think with piano, it's it's slightly, it's quite meditative. You know, um, it's. With dancing, you're constantly interacting with another person. Here, you are constantly just just tuning into the sound. So, it it is very it is very peaceful. I I would say. I, would say I, it's I suppose it's, it's good because it may take you out of your uh, situation, present situation, and take you a bit to to another one. Also, world. it feels like the time stops, like nothing, everything ceases to exist. So um, in a way, you can you can say that you feel quite enclosed in in the surrounding in the sound surrounding that you create, um, and that just it's it's a bit like you know like a travel space travel. Um, you you okay. just get to travel somewhere else with with the piece you're working on. Uh, either it's better than or Bach or Mozart or Chopin. So it's, it's a bit of a way of traveling when you cannot travel physically. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I would say that you get to travel quite uh, quite a lot with the with the learning to play pieces. Yes, it's and also it creates kind of a different world around yourself, different from the restricted yes, world yes, we are living in. You get um, about everything else that you hear on the news and everything else that is going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And and you said that you had very good teachers. How do you? get your training now that you cannot go and, and get someone sitting next to you at the piano. Yes, true. I had to move online and luckily, thanks to being able to continue with my training, I kept my sanity going. 
because um, when you have your appointment, uh, you're working towards your appointment and um, it is not as in dancing, for example, you can turn up for your lesson and you don't necessarily have to practice at home on your own because you get to practice with your teacher. Whereas with the piano, you really have to prepare as much as you can prepare. And that um, gives you a goal or a task to work, work, work you know, towards um, when you have appointment from the appointment. And it has been challenging, I think, for everyone um, to do things online. but. Um, we just simply have to adapt. Okay, yes. Um, do you see yourself moving towards piano or carrying on doing piano after the lockdown? Or do you think it's going to become a bit less and less once? It's quite interesting because in a way you, you were forced into it. You were forced into perhaps, you know, discipline, determination. That's all that was available to you. It was playing piano. Despite I, I have been teaching online dancing, but of course the hours has been, you know, some of the work has been completely lost from the piano, uh, from the dancing. Um, I think I'm glad in a way that I was able to develop more discipline, better discipline perhaps. And so I'd like to continue with disciplining myself um, as much as I can when the restrictions easy off. Um, and I think um, it, you know, in my heart, I'll be always a dancer. So I think I'd like to continue mm -hmm. with um, teaching dancing, uh, connecting, uh, you know, performing dancing, mm -hmm. doing anything connected with dancing. But um, equally, I'm really glad that I was able to to find my way towards piano studying. Yes. One of the things they said during these COVID restrictions, and especially during the first lockdown, is that it, it was very useful to people to create a routine. Uh, every day to structure your day doing things so it doesn't a day doesn't melt into another like a mess of it's very nothing easy going to on. do that yes yes yes, yes. it's it's um it's like um it's it's really hard because you have created a discipline out of misfortune in a way mm -hmm. um it wasn't really a choice you chose somebody else chose it for you and you suddenly were in prison in your own house and had to think what can I do to to mm -hmm. keep my existence productive in, mm -hmm. in a certain way? Um, and, 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 the, and the fact that you have to play the piano uh, every day it sort of helps to give a structure the day. How, how much you practice? Co correct, correct. Yes, um, I'm a bit of extremist, so <laughs> I can go and practice six, you know, seven, eight hours, and then I will not practice for two days, for example. But um, something interesting happened this at the beginning of this year. I don't know why it happened after a year, but I seem to develop this um, habit of a discipline. So now I practice six, seven hours a day. Now my teacher says three, four hours should be sufficient, but unfortunately I'm still at the early stages and I, I would like to um, you know, benefit again from the time that we have at the moment because um, we might need to perhaps adjust our schedule as soon as we go back to work. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, well, that's that's something, okay. So you said that it took you about like a year to get that discipline yes, yes, ingrained. Yes. If we of stay in the lockdown Not for just get a binge in playing and then <laughs> stop, it just get the discipline of just this amount of hours every day. Yes, I think if we stay in for another year, I will not want to come out of the house. I think everybody has um, adapted to a new routine of some kind and I think it's time to now go back to reality, really. Um, fingers crossed mm -hmm. that we can just go back to to what we were doing okay. before and then perhaps carry on with you know our hobbies or things so, we enjoy doing so you think that them playing an instrument not just piano it was a good way of of, of coping with, with these restrictions yes okay. well i think you need to choose something you you incline towards you know you need to choose something you really enjoy i enjoy music i enjoy sound i, I enjoy creating sound some people just enjoy watching or listening to things I actually like to put my hands on it, so it's been slightly different because my my feet uh, got a really good rest during the whole year, but my hands, oh my goodness, and my hands um, had to get used to being used. So um, in a way, um, it hasn't been so bad. Okay, kid, kid, kid. So I think um, it was very lovely the first piece that, that you played for us, and I will ask you now if you could. 
perhaps play a bit a bit more for us before the our audience put some questions to you. Do, would you play something for us? Thank you. Yes, I will. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, welcome again, everybody. We are now in Charing Cross Library again and um, keeping a safe distance. And welcome again to Edita, and thank you very much for the lovely performance. Um, and now uh, would be a opportunity for everybody to put some questions to uh, to Edita. And there are already some questions in the Q and A, which I'm going to to read to you if you if you are ready. Sure. Okay. Um, one, the first question says, you play with such mass, much feeling. Do you think that your background in dancing helps with this? Hello, everybody. Um, I think uh, being musical uh, helps. Uh, I have very good ears. Um, and even when I dance, I dance with a feeling. So um, I tend to uh, run away from technicalities and uh, precise footwork here and there sometimes um, and I try to always try to put feeling first because I think um, I think at the end of the day somebody will be listening to your performance and so because of that um, I think you, you try to convey emotion that you feel perhaps at that moment and so uh, maybe every time it would feel slightly different and therefore the piece would come out completely differently every time. OK, so we've got another question. Um, are there particular pieces of music or music styles that you found particularly helpful in coping with the lockdown and social isolation? Um, I tend to concentrate on classical music, so I explore different composers like uh, Beethoven, for example, for Elise, or Moonlight Sonata, Chopin, Prelude in A minor or E minor or different different minors, um, different mazurkas. Um, then you have uh, Bach has different inventions. Uh, the most challenging I find Mozart and Bach. These are quite challenging composers, mm -hmm. but I tend to incline towards Chopin perhaps because it's very melodic. Mm -hmm. um, do you play different music when you are in different moods or? <laughs> Um, I think it's because I'm concentrating on the technique and sometimes when you concentrate on the technique um, you tend to just work on, you know, you can work on two pieces for a whole year, for example. Um, but uh, I used to listen to a lot of jazz, so perhaps in future I might explore jazz. <laughs> okay, so this is a technical question. What type of piano is the most suitable for the complete beginner? 
Okay, uh, well, um, as you know, um, uh, until just recently, I had a digital piano. So I would really suggest for someone who's starting from zero to get just nice Yamaha digital piano. Um, and once you get to a half decent level, maybe grade four, grade five, then perhaps you could invest into acoustic piano because there is no replacement for playing on the acoustic. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to play the piano for dancers, uh, for example, uh, at a dance competition? <laughs> yeah, it sounds exciting. Um, I'm not sure. I think if I was at the dance competition, I would rather dance <laughs> rather than play. But maybe I ask we have some beautiful slow waltzes that um, I really like. They are piano pieces, and um, so I think I'm going to try to learn those. Um, another question about pianos. Is that piano, I assume is the piano that we saw you playing on, is that a traditional piano or a digital one? Do you have a preference? I am about to buy one and one or the other. <laughs> Well, it depends really what your budget is and um, it depends how uh, how you see yourself, where do you want to really go with the piano. If you just uh, want to play for yourself and it really depends, um, you'll find that um, better you get, um, perhaps you'll incline to go and get acoustic pianos. So yes, you can get cheap, very cheap acoustic pianos if you do have space in your in your place where you live. Um, was that a acoustic piano? What yeah, you have? the one that I, I was playing on, yes, it is acoustic piano, but it also has a silencer. So as you know, we live, uh, you know, if only I lived in a castle, not yet, <laughs> but one day if I do live, I'll have a stay away. Um, until then, um, of course, you have to be considerate to your neighbors as well. Uh, nobody wants to listen to your practice seven hours, uh, you know, seven hours a day. So uh, it has a fitted um, silencer. And um, with this, you, you know, you can use your headphones and practice. And then when you need to apply yourself acoustically, because it is completely different, you know, have to apply different technique when you use um, acoustic sound. Mm -hmm. um, will you be playing concerts when things are open again? I am not ready con for concerts. I wish I was. <laughs> I was so nervous when I was recording this for all of you. <laughs> so uh, you can you can detect some mistakes um, as I was playing. Um, I, um, I, I, you know, it's just so strange to know where the life will take you. If I uh, am able to continue practice uh, continuously, mm -hmm. um, fingers crossed, maybe in a couple of years time, I'll be mm -hmm. ready for the public. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, another question. Um, I would love to explore whether I could learn the piano. Is there some way to test whether I'd be suited to for doing that without having to commit firmly from the from the outset? Or would buying a piano be essential given the impact of daily practice on progression and therefore enjoyment? Yes, well, um, there are different uh, houses. They house uh, pianos. You can go and rent it for £10 an hour. So if perhaps you just uh, wish to test it out, maybe book a piano lesson with someone, um, hopefully some good teacher. <laughs> And then um, have a lesson, a few lessons perhaps, at least minimum, at least, I don't know, five, six, seven maybe. And then uh, by then you hopefully will know if you enjoy it, like it, if you have ability to take to it. Okay. Or, or perhaps you could ask a friend who has a piano. Absolutely. And, and <laughs> ask, ask, ask him or her to, to let you uh, test it out. Test it out. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. OK, uh, I think at the moment there are no more questions, but we have a couple of minutes to go. So perhaps I could put you a question of 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 my own. Um, uh, you just started, um, I mean, training a, as a dancer and that's where your career has has gone. If you have had the possibility to start piano from the very beginning, from you were very young, do you think you would have enjoyed that more or, or, or would have seen it something more fulfilling? When I was, when I was a little girl, I, one thing I really wanted to do is to dance and play piano, but unfortunately we could not afford to buy piano. And so uh, my father instead bought me an accordion and so they signed me up oh. for a school and so for a couple of years I had to play accordion. And then they took me out of the school because I hated it to death. 
okay. I hated it to death. Uh, but then until I was 16, um, I was it was compulsory at home. My mom would sing and I would pick up songs, folk songs by ear. And then I would need to uh, perform for my father every time Sunday afternoon after lunch. So that was going on until I was 16. And then eventually when I was 18, we bought the piano, but I left house. So I no longer lived with my parents. Mm, I think I would have loved to um, become quite quite good, uh, accomplished at playing piano. And mm -hmm. I think I could, I could mm -hmm. be quite good, you know. So it's, it's not just something that we do during the lockdown to, to copy something that has carried has ca comes from father in a way but it's funny because only the last four or five years i have started to 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 take it up and again not not very seriously just as a hobby because sometimes when you take something up quite late in a life you're mm -hmm. not 20 anymore mm -hmm. uh you think maybe there's not not much point to it but mm -hmm. i think there is there is no limit on on learning so you can be 70 and you can take something up and if you dedicate yourself and you love it mm -hmm. i think it can take you somewhere. It depends mm -hmm. where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's that sounds very very good. Um, there are some very lovely comments. The, there is some people said, "Oh, mm, thank you. That was beautiful." Um, so I'm sure there will be more more comments later on. So we are closing um, now because we are quickly running out of time. So if you don't mind, I'm going to say. Goodbye to Edita. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much, much for doing this with uh, for us. And I'm going to switch off the camera now. I mean, switch on the camera towards me. Uh, let's see if it works. Yeah, here I am. And I just want to say thank you very much to everybody who has been here with us tonight in this event in our series Mind Your Head. I hope that it's been enjoyable to people and perhaps has encouraged someone to take up a musical instrument um, or any other hobby. If you have not made up your mind what you want to do, come to our next one, which is on the 30th of March this very month. And it's all about playing plays, theater plays without a theater. Uh, sadly, the theater is still closed. So um, if you miss plays, come on and, and learn how people have managed to cope with that um, um, with that kind of hobbies during the lockdown, 30th of March. It's on even bright already. So thank you very much and I hope to see you next time. Bye.